Hey everyone, my name is Clint Decker and I also go under the moniker of Ferros Fables. I am going to do a complete playthrough of my three year effort game, The Struggles of Stefan, for you all. And this will, this video will hopefully, you know, just be able to show you guys the storyline of the game for those who found it really challenging, weren't able to complete it just so I can try to hammer home the storyline a little bit more. And just, I wanted to give you a little bit more of a backstory on some of the different factors in the game, things that was, I was thinking during certain times of, of the development life cycle and stuff. So we're gonna get started here. I am gonna be using a PlayStation controller. You could use a Windows, Xbox, really any gamepad controller and keyboard as well. If you're using a PC, Mac, or Linux, and then if you're using an Android or iPhone, there is mobile buttons on the screen that you could use. Which reminds me that the game is readily available on Android, iPhone, Steam for Windows, Mac, and Linux. And also those same platforms are available on itch.io as well. And it's available for free too. So. Feel free to give it a crack and try it out. Let me know what you think. Feel free to rate the game. Hit me up personally. Let me know what you think of it. And, uh, you know, it just helps me to continue to grow as a developer and just a content creator in general. So we're going to get started here. So you are welcomed with my advertisement here to just mention my moniker. I created the scene, the lighthouse. And you also have a little bit of a disclaimer here in the beginning before the main menu. Here is the main menu. Okay, so when I first was thinking of how I want to be able to create a main menu, I knew there was going to be multiple levels in the game, and I like the concept of being able to see the entirety of the level, and yet it's from a very far bird's, out, bird's eye view of, of the level and stuff, but I like the idea of that at the main menu. So if you ever get stumped up on one particular level and you quit the game and you come back into it, the, I have a save system that will take you to that level again, but on the main menu you're going to see the actual full entirety of the level. And I have this Gaussian blur in here as well to just kind of add to that aesthetics. So this is the first level, and let's get started. So this is the entrance here. You get a little bit of a foreshadowing of all the th obstacles you'll have to encounter as you make your way forward. Wake up. More foreshadowing. Hey there, Stefan. I'm your conscience. Act upon my words and everything will work out fine. You have to wake up or you're going to be late for work. Quick, let's head downtown. You don't have much time. Okay, so I'm going to try not to interrupt the dialogue too much as we play through the game. So, you are introduced by your conscience to go forward and, you know, be able to work through different obstacles throughout the game. The first obstacle in the chapter, in this first chapter, is to make it downtown to work on time. So this is Stefan's room. You could see a lot of these pictures here on the wall. They're, they're all pictures of high school. Uh, let's see in particular, the first one there was when I was, I think it was either, I think I was homecoming king when I was, home, was it homecoming king or spring king? I, I can't even remember, it was one of those, but that's a picture of me. And then my brothers and I are that slanted one in the middle on our skateboards. And then also the last one is me at my high school graduation. So we're gonna move forward here. Stefan's house. I was just kind of going off of just something in my head. 
you notice that for now you can't actually move to the left later on in the game you'll have more access to different parts of the house oh I guess I'll also talk a little bit about the save system here so when you pause the game you can you have different options here you can go back to the main menu you can restart the level and you can just quit the game there's a checkpoint system that I have in the level that I'll eventually get to but uh, I'll show you guys because I think my webcam was actually blocking it I'm gonna go back to the main menu and if you didn't see originally it just had new game and quit on the main menu I have that dynamically being changed so if I go back to the main menu now you can actually see it recognizes that I started the game already so I can continue and the continue right now because it's in the start of the level it skips that opening sequence so the user doesn't have to keep trying to skip over the movie sequence if they restart the level it will it will like when you go to the level and you pause it and you restart the level it will go through that entire level uh, including with the movie sequence in the beginning so the thing I didn't show you here was moving my webcam down just to get a view of the title and everything I think my webcam was blocking it before so this is the main menu here as I was saying Continue here, and you'll notice when we start back up, we are back here again. So, to read the info signs, approach them and press triangle. All right. So, I will spare most of most of these signs. Not have to go through every single one of them, but teaches you how to jump teaches you about the uh, cash system. So basically, these dollar bills here, if you collect five of these in each level, and you find a piggy bank, if you run into that piggy bank and you have the five dollars, the piggy bank will um, squeal, it'll jump up in the air, and then it creates, it opens up a shortcut in the level for you so that you can move forward and it avoids more more of the challenging part of the level so it's kind of like a quick shortcut in the level release kindness so if I shoot you can see shoots peace signs and I have these entities or enemies I'll call them where the metaphor behind a lot of them is things like temptation aggression things like that and the way to suppress those is through kindness so you have a kindness meter here on each of these entities and you they'll if you hit them and you could see that if you take too much time to keep shooting the kindness on them it replenishes it brings them back to their current state so to avoid that you want to keep shooting the peace sign and then eventually they will be kind and you can pass through. There's the crouch button and if you move forward you, we can get the second dollar bill here. Again, this, well actually I didn't say this yet but this will have spoilers in it so if you're looking to play the game then please turn the video off and maybe if you get stumped or anything just tune back in. So. So this part here, it looks very random, my setup, but um, in high school we had, my brothers and I would set up a picnic table that was slanted on a empty basketball court that we had outside in our yard, and we would skateboard on this and stuff like that. So it was kind of like a homage to, to high school, things of the sort, to run as I was probably doing already. Like torches, you will be able to activate milestones, which serve as a mid-level checkpoint. All right, so the torch and milestone system. So I, I love the Donkey Kong countries from the Super Nintendo series. It's more specifically, Donkey Kong Country 2, but all of them had a system of checkpoint barrels and I like that but I wanted to try to raise that up a notch and make it a little bit more challenging 
So I have this this milestone system where you have to collect a torch and approach that milestone to be able to save your progress to the halfway point of the level. And then if you quit quit the if you quit the game or the level, you could click the continue button on the main menu and it'll take you right to that checkpoint. So the save points really are the beginning of each level and the middle of each level. So I have the torch now. You can see. Yes. What I'm gonna do too is I'm gonna take the path of the getting all of the olives in the game as well, so that you can all see the What do I want to call it? Not the secret ending, but something of the sort. I had some good suggestions from some players about things when you were running down this hill originally. I didn't have a, a rock here, and they would always just run right into this, this mountain goat here. So I have some literal impediments in your path here to help along the way. Just ahead is a milestone. If you light it with a torch, you'll be able to restart there in case you slip up during a level. Alright, so this is what I was telling you about with the milestone system. So, if we have the torch and we approach this, we are now at the checkpoint. So that means now I have an extra option in the pause menu for restarting from a milestone if I want, or I can restart the entire level if I want. And if I also die, you will see that I respawn here at the checkpoint. And I have a little bit of a metaphor here on not dwelling in the past. There's a lot of a lot of little hidden metaphors I put behind things in this game, so some I might not full, fully want to explain, but I like to leave things open to interpretation. All right. I have the fifth dollar bill, and this sign will tell me that this is a piggy bank here, and if I approach it with the five dollars, it has opened up a shortcut. So the first one is pretty self-explanatory. I have a light radiating from inside of the church hall here, so it's kind of a welcoming way into the building. You can go forward. Otherwise, this would have been locked if you didn't have the $5 to deposit in the piggy bank. You wouldn't have been able to go through. And this would break you out to the other side to be able to quickly finish the level. But I'm going to take the more scenic route for this particular one. Every level has this, so I won't necessarily use the piggy bank in every single level. Because I like to show some of the things that I, I liked on other routes. Sometimes I like the strategic with platform jump. Piggy bank better than you benefit from walking or running jumps. This is just telling you about the being strategic between walking and running jumps. For a first time player, they might be confused on what they have to do here. So I put that sign there to do this blind jump. And we are scaling up this wall. Cam was blocking part of that, I apologize, but it just basically said no more enemies in the level. And what that means, typically, in this game is if you complete the game now, or com yeah, complete the game, if you complete the level now, that welcomes you to the olive branch system that I have in the game. And basically there are, there's an olive for every level. And once you complete every olive in the game, then you get this, I'll call it a secret ending, but it's nothing that's really gonna be enhancing the plot of the story. It's more of a gratitude kind of thing. So we have, as if we complete the level now, we'll be able to get the church hall. We have to climb up the steeple. Have faith in your running and walking jumps, and you'll make it. Just mentioning about scaling up the church.
I guess I could talk a little bit about the music here. So... Let me think here. I wanted to come in with a very happy-go-lucky kind of song. And one of the more challenges of each one of the songs that I've created in this game was the looping. So having a way to seamlessly loop each one of the songs and not have that like little bit of a glitch where you can hear it blatantly looping. So that was actually one of the more challenging things when I was composing each one of these songs is I'm structuring this in a certain way, but how do I get this to circle back right to the intro and sounds seamless across the loops? So this was the, this first chapter is more of the happy-go-lucky kind of songs, just to kind of welcome the elements of things. You did it, Stefan. Let's pick up the pace a bit more, or you will surely be late. All right, we made it. And each end of the level has this conscience, which signifies. Once you run into the conscience, you have completed the level. This is I have two different level completion segments. This is the olive completion segment. Let's see where I acquired an olive. This is the olive branch, and you can see I got the first olive out of all of these. show you one other thing here too. We are going to go Jaffa Hill. This is the second level here before I go forward. Now we, since we completed the first level, we have a new option in the menu called replay levels. And if we go to that, I'll bring down my webcam. You could see that I have completed the first level. If I want to replay it, then I could just go back into that and replay it. You can also see that I have an olive completed for that level. So if there's a level that you don't get the olive with, you won't see that olive. So it's a good way to map your way to perfection. So yep, if I wanted to replay the entire level, I could replay it. But we are not gonna do that. Down this hill is the fastest route for us to take, Stefan. You won't have much control going down it, so listen to my command to jump to avoid things in your path. All right, so this, I haven't seen this in a video game, so I like the concept of just rolling down a hill and not really having much, much ability to move up and down it. So you're kind of blinded, the conscience tells you when to jump, do things of that sort. I'm jump. going to skip the dollar bill up there. Jump. I got s Notice the flowers animating as jump. you roll into them. Jump. The bees. A lot of this jump. was symbolic of, again, you're close a, a huge hill. There are way too many vines ahead. We have to take a high route. Listen for my command to jump. Sorry, I don't want to interrupt the dialogue so much so, you, so that you can actually follow along here. But a lot of this was related jump. to a big hill that was right next to my house. And during the winters, jump. during the winters, we would actually go through and sled ride. We had snowboarders. People all over the town would go and sled ride and snowboard down this, this hill. It was pretty neat. So a little bit of homage to the St. Basil's Hill. I'm also aiming to be flawless in this game without any deaths, but no guarantees on that. Alright, and funny story here, so you'll hear some branch cracking sounds as you did when I came in off the hill. So for this particular branch cracking sound, I was having spaghetti the one day, so I took some dry spaghetti and I just cracked it in half and it sounded to me like a branch cracking. So I ended up going with that. So listen close. 
dry pasta. Cool. We are at the checkpoint of the second level. If I... I thought heavily about making these vines 3D meshes, I think it would have been pretty hard on performance and optimization. So I ended up just keeping the sprites and these were one of the first few sprites that I actually created, so I kept them. Oh, I like this. So there's like not really any way that you can get this dollar bill. The only real way to do it is to jump from above, and if you do that, the force of it causes the branch cracking. I don't have the fifth dollar bill. I skipped that, but this would open a little tree house here that has a zip line that will take you down. But I like this, this route to be able to show you a little bit more of the funny little thing I got down here. Big chase, big chase. Ahead, don't come to the prince. And I have a... Poor bee. Just an infinite looping animation here. He's stuck. I should help him, eventually. Scaffolding being done here. A little bit more of a challenging one here. You made it downtown, Stefan. Just a bit further now. And this would be where the zip line comes down if you were to take the shortcut. All of number two. The system that I have here, as far as level structure goes, is that I have three levels per chapter. So this is the second second level, and once I once I beat the next level, that is the end of chapter one. And I have a cutscene at the end of each chapter as well, or most of them. Hey, there's your skateboard, Stefan. Jump on it, and you'll easily make it to work on time. A skateboard, huh? What if I don't want to? Can't go forward. So, means I'm forced to. Can't go back either. So, just go forward. Don't want to be late. This has an... I'd call it an infinite side-scrolling segment, but it ends up stopping. Symbolic of retro games like Battletoads and things like that. The, the vultures... I know it looks like they're the same thing. I probably should have modified that a little bit to make them all like unique looking. But there's a, there's eight of them, and they ended up just being upset with Stefan. So Stefan has his chance to bring peace to them. Take note of the background here, that building. tried to do a lot of cycling elements in the game. You've reached the end of the concrete, Stefan. Hop off your skateboard. Some inside data there. 
If you know, you know. And now they're all after him. They have him cornered. If I did the piggy bank, the shortcut for this would be right here, that this bridge would open and you'd be able to slide down a bunch of pipes. It looks like the key to control the elevator is missing. We need that key to make it down to the job site. It has to be around here somewhere. So, I gotta find a key. This time, I want to say mm, mid to early, yeah, early to mid 2020, I started getting in more into Blender, and this was one of the first few models that I made was this drill. Aside from the primitive stuff like cubes, which you can obviously see in the levels. I <laughs> Funny thing is, is I actually created these drills before the first level, Stefan House and the church building and, and all of the different structures of the, the elements before, because I had a completely different structure and I revamped it all. It was just flat 2D. I love the concept of 2.5D, so I ended up revamping everything uh, later on. So there was a lot of work that had to be done to make that happen, but I wanted to capture that 2.5 feet. I think it's safe to say that you made it on time, Stefan. Let's head down further into the tunnels to the right and start your work there. Oh. That is the end of chapter one, which means that we are heading into a cutscene. I don't think it's in every chapter, but the majority of them I have a cutscene at the end of the chapter. Stefan equipped himself with a light and a hard hat as he descended further into the tunnels of dirt and debris. He wasn't alone. He could hear the clanging of work up ahead, as well as his conscience. He had shown perseverance in getting to work on his own and this fortitude would lead him to consistently give his all in everything he focused on. Little did he know how far he would push these limits. All right, a little foreshadowing there, and we are headed to the mines. Stefan has a new asset, which is his hard hat. The music for this here the percussion is very symbolic to um, miners in the in the cavern or in a cave mine new enemy they will jump and you can barely see but they have a red point light on them and then when you Render them kind, restless, they turn green. Piece of paper, what could this be? Perhaps the thesis of the second chapter? Looks like a note for you, Stefan. The boss wants you to grab a jackhammer from storage and start digging up coal at the end of this tunnel. You know very well it 
this door and shed is locked at all times. We'll have to explore around for the key to unlock it. Alright, so we have to find a key to a storage shed to get a jackhammer and tear up some more coal. The normal maps that I put on the rocks and stuff, I was pretty happy with. They look, they look pretty good, if I don't say so myself. So this level centers around this crane. Right now it's the crane is up. And if we bring the crane down, we can actually get to the other side of the crane. So we're gonna try to do that. I think I could almost make this jump, but I cannot. Go forward here, try to get past these boxes. No, I can't. Blocked. This one sometimes get, gets me. To lower the crane arm by flipping the switch, press triangle. So, some inspiration in this level, actually in Chapter 2 in general, is the OG original Tomb Raider. And actually it was in the second one too. And it, maybe part of... Maybe it was in some of the others as well, of the retro Tomb Raiders. But when you would go and do a certain action, there would be a camera view change to pan to see what you changed. And in this case, I'm going to flip this switch and you're going to see the what happens from me flipping the switch and it moves the camera to show you what is actually being done i kind of like that element of tomb raider so i went with that forward because it, the gate is locked. I need another key. It's kind of light in this room here. Probably should have turned up the contrast or the brightness. side of the box. What does this switch do? Plows it over. And I can move back to a familiar place. The crane is now down. And I'm greeted with a cricket. And a key. It's not the key to the storage ship, but it looks like something we might be able to use to get closer to it. We have a key. I doubt it's to the storage shed, it's probably to this gate, right?
this? Another olive if I can do this. We're gonna take the shortcut in this case. Just for if anybody tries to speed run the game, if they just try to run underneath this box, it will crush them. So you gotta take your time. Unless you go the alternate path, which actually, if you speed run it, might be quicker. So you can see some things that I've started to introduce a little bit more into each each level. I start to increment a little bit more on on these on each level. So the next level will introduce one other new thing, and it will be pretty transparent right from the get go of what it is in the town well. Truck on a hill never is a good thing. Punks the fog. Has he survived? Yes. Okay, so this is the swimming mechanics. There's a lot of positional stuff with the joystick. Uh, it was really happy how this turned out. Big thanks to Kyle Bishop for lending me his opinion on the mechanics of this and helping me to get this top notch. I think it turned out really good. Very responsive. There is the sunken truck. The workers are not going to be happy over that one. Oh, shoot. Well, you're going to find out how you could drown in this. There's an oxygen tank or oxygen meter here. So you gotta stay cautious of that. I was not paying attention. These guys are pretty pretty evil looking, huh? Oh, Got a little greedy there. <sighs> oh, hang on. This is a beast of a level. I like the... I like the piggy bank of this one. I will definitely be taking that one. Which makes for a longer part of the, the, of the level, but it's well worth it. Which is why I'm also trying to render all of these. On mobile, because of the optimization and stuff, I ended up having to remove some of the point lights 
but you can really see it on on PC, Mac, or Linux. Some of that that blue radiating from the, the water. Where are you hiding? Got two more. And you'll notice if you can hear the audio too, I have in the script, when you're underwater, a big low pass filter to be able to add that extra, extra effect in there to make it seem like it's underwater. It's pretty happy with the refraction material on the water as well. It just adds to the immersive aspect of the swimming. I'll show you a nifty little thing that I did too that might not be, I mean maybe some players will do it. I figured that there would be some people that tried to trick the system around and be able to find, you know, some kind of a, a cog in the enemy system and stuff. So coming up here I'll demonstrate a thing for the crickets here because what happens if they fall in the water? They're they're kind of they can't really attack you in the water, right? So I'll show you what I do in that case. So we're gonna push you, push. just basically disappears. Slow fade out. I don't think crickets can survive underwater, right? So I wanted to have a little bit more of an elegant feature there. Snakes. Temptation. of falling rock. So that would probably mean this is danger zone, right? I think this turned out here pretty good, the boulder chases. I have a This is all physics based, so the boulder is, is all physics based, not animated. Ooh, close call. You would get crushed if you were under that. And a little stinker here. blue light. I 
again, I'm giving all the secrets away in this one. If you're if you're gonna play the game, please play the game first, and then if you get stumped, tune into this video. I really wanted to show the storyline more so than than anything in this. Pans. That must be the jackhammer. The storage shed key. Quick! I've got you in front of that ledge. Act quick. Oh, I didn't actually mention about the conscience's voice too. So all I did with him, it, so I did all the voice acting in the game. So. With the conscience, I pitch shifted my voice down about negative 3.5 decibels, and then I added some reverb and some echo to his voice, and that's the conscience. Let's go back and take a look at where that last quarter might have rolled to, Stefan. I put this in here because you there's in order to complete the game, you need the storage shed key. And there's still a little bit left in this level. So if you went through all the obstacles and you didn't actually get the key, you gotta go all the way back. So I, I threw that in there to make the user free to choose. Hey, it's up to you if you wanna keep going forward, but if I were you, I would go back and get the key. Or actually, I might have gave that away. You knew the key was up on the cliff, but that boulder caused it to collapse down here. That's the key to the storage shed. Great work, Stefan. Now we can head over to the storage shed and get that jackhammer. Got the key, we got the key. And if you pause the game, you can see, I didn't mention it too. Oh, my webcam is blocking it. You could see where you have your number of dollars and things of that sort as well. So if you ever get stumped on that, you can see through there. back again. What does that mean? Oh, the plank's not there. And this is one of the first few shortcuts that I kind of make it a requirement to get one of the enemies. So if you're looking for the olive in this one, you have to do the shortcut. Which forces you to see the foreshadowing cave art that I have here. I won't tell you what it is because you will if you play the game you already know, but I have some foreshadowing here. There's one element. There's the other element. Another. Last one. Practice those jumps. Storage shed. Whoa. What do we got in here? And I created this model as well, the jackhammer and generator. I think it turned out pretty good, considering I was a rookie at Blender, 3D modeling. Still am, but I'm getting better. OK. 
Okay, so that means level two of chapter two is completed. And we are doing good in the olive branch system. Hollow limits. So, we are going to be using the jackhammer in this one. And I specifically liked the chord system that I did in this. I had to do a lot of like tweaking around to get this thing to work, but I got it. And I think it looked pretty good, so I'll show you. And also, there's haptics on the keyboard too, that meaning vibrating. So, the devices will all vibrate. Stefan, your hard hat. Now you're going to have to be even more cautious without any light. Stay alert. And he lost his hard hat too. So here is the chord system. I like it. We are going to do the shortcut on this one. Intense, intense. I'm not saying I'll make this flawlessly either, but it's been a while. Stefan, this is getting pretty risky. The next jump looks like a long one. Stay back a bit until you can see the ledge. All for coal. Sucker for C minor, you hear that piano there? That's my favorite key. Stefan, I don't think you should try to cross it. Stefan! <coughs> Phew, that was a close call. I'm glad you landed safely. Look at all the coal underneath you, Stefan. The boss will really be happy if we can get some of this back to him. We won't be able to gather any though, since the jackhammer's gone. Let's just try to make our way back out of here the way we came. Then we can let everyone know about all of this cold. Not so fast though. Don't go running back so quickly. It's much safer to walk through here so that you'll be able to see better and also avoid breathing in too much cold dust. Alright, so now I have the oxygen meter just like when I was swimming, but it's with coal now. So if I'm running... Or if I jump, you'll see where it depletes its health. You have to walk, and walking will prevent the coal dust from affecting your oxygen meter. I like the mystery of, of things, and I wanted to add a, like a, kind of some mysterious effects of this whole entire mining underground area chapter. This area looks like it was abandoned a long time ago. I wonder if the switches here still work. Let's try them out. Spoilers! 
don't want to look at the puzzle of this, turn away. <coughs> nah. I'm not going to go forward, I'm going to actually use the shortcut in this level. This part is painfully slow, but I really wanted to introduce the element of walking more in this part, and the unassurance of when something's going to drop. Big jump here. If you fall, you got a lot to redo. And the raccoon left me the hard hat and the jackhammer back. That was nice of him. Such a caring little creature. Yet yeah, runs away from me. This is the end of chapter two. Get ready for the thesis of the game. After recovering his equipment and returning to the surface, Stefan told the workers about the coal he had found. Doing this made him feel accomplished and that he was contributing to the team. However, to his dismay, the workers laughed hysterically. <laughs> that ain't coal back in there, boy. Just some accumulation of exhaust fumes and slag dust. We had our vehicles digging around back in them bowels months ago. And so the time passed on with the cycle of Stefan doing what he could to make it by as an accomplished coal miner. Every day, he traveled back and forth from the heights of Gojefa to the depths, going above and beyond to feel good enough for his job. The physical and mental stress he inflicted on himself looped endlessly. With each iteration, it sheared off a tiny strand of his physical and emotional health. Eventually, these strands were swallowed up by a dark storm that circled the land he walked on. From within it, three pestilences were summoned over the life of Stefan. A pestilence of anxiety, a pestilence of rage, and a pestilence of sadness. They would each pry off a piece of Stefan and hold them ransom, leaving him in a state of both turmoil and nothingness. Now you know what the objective of the game could potentially be. You can see Stefan has changed quite a bit. seem to be on a train. My, my inspiration behind this is just, I like the old timey vibe of trains and old music radiating from the trains and just going through a storm with, with that. Now, of course by yourself, so very, I don't know, 
nerving, I suppose. Because this, this chapter is edgy. We have factors such as shock and anxiety, blur on the camera to impede your vision. As you can probably tell what the first emotion is that you have to address. These guys are somewhat difficult. They, you have to you have to walk past them to avoid them, but if you're after the olives, you got it. And they're also similar to the vultures, a gang. These ones are color distinctive, so or color exclusive. That's that's me on the vocals, and the lyrics are all. You can hear anxiously waiting for you, things of that sort, just to set the tone. You can see the torch, and I have. You could you can hear it's not overlapping the audio in the entire level. It's it's taking the place of speakers in the train. This level takes some endurance. <laughs> I really like that that part. I think it really captures a uh, there's something vicious going on. There's one part in this level that always seems to be troubling for me, but I like the aspect of it, so I kept it. No longer go forward, so you gotta go up. Hear the conscience, but where is he? I like this shot here. I got kind of like a moonlight shining through there. Just gotta go upward. Can't go left. So I go right. I see a red carpet. Where does the red carpet lead me to? Pestilence, run! Run! Terror ensues. This 
escape, escape. So now I am running away. Don't know where, but I'm running. Running, 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 running. Not much to say about these parts, I just have to backtrack. I think this is the hardest part of the level, is that once you get the checkpoint, you're doing the entire level backwards. So it makes it a little bit more challenging, because there's more things that you have to try to avoid. Like these orbs. And then here, you have an orb that chases you now, so you're timed can't jump over it. You have to just keep running. So it's definitely a test of endurance. Last enemy. Ooh, close call. Alright, and this is the, what I would say, the more difficult parts of the level, and it's right at the end too. I just liked putting it in here, I, I personally liked it. Help me out. That crate is too heavy and is outweighing me. If you can lighten the load a bit, that should bring my crate down. Then I should be able to escape. And it's not that it's difficult, it's just that it's... If you do, by chance, die from it, you have to start all the way back from the checkpoint. So it was a way of raising the stake a little bit. New chapter, upping the upping the challenge. The second order is coming after you now. Hang in there. So... Do my best to get this first try. I always forget the pattern. <laughs> I don't know. This is funny. Almost like a hypnotic thing. Just keeps going back and forth. Keeps going back and forth. Here comes the last orb, Stefan. If you survive this one, I should be able to break free. Okay. The first level of the Anxiety Pestilence chapter. Sunset Scouting. How does that tie in with a train? You'll see. Stefan, wake up. You must have had an intense nightmare. You were shaking tremendously. I can already tell you won't be able to fall back asleep. But at least you rested for most of the afternoon into this evening. With all of the anxiety that you've had lately, nothing will help your mind better than a walk. Hey, let's head out to the woods behind your house, Stefan. He's so anxious, can't get to sleep. So, what is it? 
Hippocrates said, man's best medicine is a walk, something like that. So earlier I was saying you should be able to expand, eventually you start to expand in the house, you can start viewing all the different rooms and stuff. I can't go forward here, and I'm signifying, because it is a 2D game, you can actually go to the right now. And the concept of this level now is moving to the left. And you get a little bit of, um, what do I want to say? It's a conversation, it's a, a speech from the conscience here, and it is kind of like a take home message in the entirety of the story. I know these are hard times for you now, and that you'll do everything to get back to how you were before. You've always put your love to the extremes, the fun. I just hope you won't obsess over your faults while trying to get all your pieces back together. Life is too short to dwell on your imperfections. So you get a little bit of a foreshadowing element there. Alright, so you're about to hear the song is going to kick in and it's one of my more... I mean, I have a ton of favorites in, in this soundtrack that I made, but this is this was one of the ones that had things that I liked that I really touched home on, like a, a bellowing bass, uh, bass piano, and then high, like whistling, like a bunch of scouts in a woods, just going through a woods, and then having this bellowing dark, boom, boom, like bassy piano that just is building its way up from the depths almost like this gigantic woodsy creature that's lurking in the depths of the the scouts and stuff so and then i bring it all together with uh, orchestration and and strings and stuff as well so uh, there's a lot of favorites that i have in this this soundtrack that i made but this was one of the i'd say top three also has one of the more peskier enemies. Newer enemies coming up. You'll hear them. And as you see earlier on, it looks like there's branches that you can jump to, but you just, you can't. So what does that mean? You'll find out soon. And there's this like creeping up piano. Pesky enemy. The peskiest enemy in the game, I think. Aside from the bosses. This is the easiest way I found just to avoiding it. Get in the middle of his path and just keep jumping. He just has such a quick recovery. Branches, it looks like you can reach to, but you just can't yet. Stefan, are you okay? You seem troubled. Conscience showing. Stefan? Interest in Stefan's feelings. Stefan. The anxiety takes over. And yet another fall for Stefan. He stared at his reflection in the water at the bottom of a dark pit. As he locked his eyes on the imperfections he was trying to fix, a flaring desire started to bloom from within him. He was determined to get out of this pit and to put his pieces back together. 
Through the will to overcome his struggles, Stefan discovered that his potential was only limited by negative thoughts. Clearing his head allowed him to ascend beyond his physical expectations. Learn a new ability. Jump twice to perform the double jump. So now I can officially double jump. And run through the woods with a torch, like a wild man. So I had those branches in the beginning of the level I could go to, which I'm going to. So, I didn't want it to be arcadey where it looked like you had a fire underwater. So, I structured it so that you could you could see the fire is out now on the torch. But when you bring up to land, you hear them light the fire back on the torch. So it has a little bit more realistic nature to it, I guess. I guess. Yeah, I didn't talk about a lot of the levels. Well, not a lot. I would say there's like three or, three or four levels where I actually change the daytime to night over time. So this was one of them. The first level was another one of, as well. But, yep, darkness has ascended across the land. spotlight on the top of this tower here. I think it looks, especially with the night and the woods and stuff like that, I liked how it looked. So this is the zip line. Back through the trees. Get to the shortcut, through the shortcut. We're gonna get rid of this last enemy here. Not rid of them, but make them kind. So another thing with a lot of these levels, how I came up with the, the layout of them is I just kind of went with it, but I had some stimulus that, or visual, I guess you'd say, that came to my head where I wanted to revolve around that. So like the mine level with the crane, uh, the jackhammer, things of that there's one 
particular thing in each one of these that I wanted to hammer home in each one of the levels. For, so for this one, it was like, okay, I really like the visual of Stefan around a bonfire. So that was what you kind of worked towards. And so yep. this was the bonfire. Level two of the third chapter. Moving right along. That doesn't sound good. Win no war. Let's get some shelter inside that windmill before it swallows us up. Run! Get into the windmill! We should be safe in here. Let's just try to relax for the time being. Stefan, are you okay? Stefan! Your anxiety is taking you over again! need to get a hold of yourself. You can do this. Oh Take boy. control of this pestilence as only you have the ability to put it to rest. Showtime. The first boss fight of the game. Need to bring this pestilence to peace. So he has multiple attacks. Series of lightning. He's got a shield. Has an effect that blurs the camera as well. And then once you get him halfway, he drops a torch, and then you can also have a little bit more visibility with the platforms as well. This song too. There, I, I have so many favorites in this soundtrack that were a lot of fun to compose and create. I tried to capture the vibe. Alright, second phase here. Give a little secret away on how to defeat this guy pretty quick. If I can get over to it. Oh, maybe. Get on this edge here where the lightning can barely hit you. Keep shooting straight up and just avoid the orb, and that's pretty much it. You don't have to keep ascending through all the different platforms if you don't want. It is a pain to have to keep jumping over that orb, but you have to anyway. So. But you avoid the majority of the obstacles. set of segments to piece back onto Stefan. Stefan proved to himself that he could patch himself up. With his growing vitality and the devotion to gain back his past self, he steadied himself for the two remaining pieces. All right. He was able to patch up one of three pieces and suppress one pestilence. What could the next chapter be? Clutches a 
of Fury. I think you can get an idea from that title. Stefan, you're pacing around the house again? You've been stuck inside of your head for way too long now, and you're going to end up scorching yourself from the inside out. Why don't you take a break from yourself and try to socialize a little bit more? I think there's supposed to be a huge gathering at the Theros Follies downtown this evening. Why don't you head on down to the club and let out some steam on the dance floor? Needing some new faces should... What's the matter, Stefan? Are you okay? All right. So, the concept of this chapter is to clear his mind and to be around other people and to go down to the Ferros Follies Club to get his groove on, get his mind off things. But what was that noise? Big boy. Run. Run, run, run. Stefan, why are you in such a hurry? I didn't realize you'd be that excited to get on downtown tonight. So, I put this quite a bit in this level, but I want to hammer it home that no one can perceive these pestilences but, Stef but Stefan. Stefan is the only one that can see these pestilences. Who doesn't miss the farm? At least the weather is supposed to hold up nicely tonight. Are you hanging in there already? Right? He doesn't see the fire, he doesn't see the conscience doesn't see any of these things. Only Stefan does. You've got to release that your fury. Holding on to anything for too long will eventually tear you from the inside out. And I'm upping the ante again in the game as far as the challenge. So, as you can see, this is the entire first level, right? Well, this is going to be... This one level is going to be a combination of the first level and the second level. So we're really testing your... This game is really in testi testing your endurance. And your skills of, of things. You'll see where the conscience gets upset with him just jumping around randomly because he doesn't see this pestilence. Bob, why are you jumping around so much? You're being unpredictable, and it's making it much more difficult to tell you when it's the right time to jump. Die there. What a wasteland. capture all of the things that were from the previous level. So the branch that fell, supposedly it was going to fall anyway. And um, yeah, everything that's involved. Here's another branch that cracked. I didn't go the shortcut because I want to show you the more scenic. Mr. Rage Pestilence chases me down again here. Run!
fire gets raised. Gotta go, gotta go. You've made it downtown, Stefan, and at record breaking time. Excellent work. Cool. All right. Level one of the Rage Pestilence chapter is complete. We are moving right along. Sundown downtown. Stefan, slow down. You've got to calm yourself. We've got some time left before the club opens. In the meantime, let's venture around town for a bit. So we are downtown. No more construction being done, so we can go through that barrier that was previously blocking us off. No need to skateboard now. But Looks like there still are some impediments. And we can scale across these window sills and things of the sort. Those dogs can be pretty chaotic. Construction. Well, guess I won't be using the milestone there. Go, run. Just out of reach. Ah, uh, he must be tired. Can't get me. He's going to plan his master scheme. I was cornered. Stefan was cornered. Stefan realized yet another vulnerability by being boxed into a corner by his inner fury. He had barely escaped, and he knew that this wouldn't be the last encounter with it. By focusing deep into his potential, he acquired another ability that would help him in overcoming this pestilence. Alright, learned a new ability. Stefan can now slide and jump along walls. There's the slide. And now we can just jump right up walls too. So remember, Looks like the Theros Follies is still closed. Let's check out the park ahead, and then come back here once it gets darker. So earlier, when the last time we played through this this level with the skateboard, I had you take note of this building here. This building is actually the club, the Theros Follies, and you can see clearly from the lights and the lack of lights actually that. It is closed yet. So we gotta go to the park, wait till it gets a little bit darker, and then head on back. So we will.
I could do the shortcut, but I want to show you... I'll show you just the first part of the shortcut. Hey, come back. I want you... Ah, I just want to talk. So we'll just go forward here. I'll show you the more scenic way. Definitely is. He is persistent, that's for sure. I like this particular part because it's complete silence. You had the the song level playing clear up until you dropped into the hole. So as you work your way out, it starts to get a little bit clearer. What? A little bit clearer here. bit clear a little bit clear got some club music playing I like this just a short short composition I made but I liked it It is jumping. Interview. It is jumping. Time to enter the club. And we are heading into the third level of the fourth chapter. What a great night to be here. This place is jumping. <laughs> Stefan, are you doing all right? It looks like your inner fury is rearing its head again. Oh boy. Well, it's time for you to extinguish it. All right, here we go. to her. Is he dead? Suppressed. He's not fully kind. Well, let's just go. Pretty happy with that particular animation. I mean, you expected it, but I think the sound effect and everything just kind of worked out pretty good. Oh, close call. Submitted to the efforts of Stefan, patching up his next missing piece. One segment remained and was the last thing Stefan believed he needed to return to the being he was years ago. Now remember, nobody could see the pestilences except Stefan. So he's jumping around, going all crazy all over the place in this club, and everybody's seeing him jumping around, going nuts, right? 
it transitions in well, I think, into the last chapter. You've got some smooth moves there, Slick. When did the circus roll into town? <laughs> yeah, really? They must take a big liking to square brain ballerinas like you. <laughs> yes, that's a poor little boy go. It's probably way past his bedtime anyway. And that transitions us to the outskirts. The last chapter. We have made it. Stefan, you're going to end up drowning yourself in your own self-hatred if you continue to take things personally. Listen to me. Forget the opinion. Ignore them and you will... The distraction Stefan placed in his head made him unable to understand his conscience. Unaware of his surroundings and now lacking his motivation, he trudged forward through the thick murk of his mind. Alright, so if you're the player, you'll notice that you don't have any, any movements, like aside from walking, you can't run anymore, you can shoot kindness. But you can't jump, you can't run, you can only walk and shoot. And so, he has lost that motivation. And now, this level has a lot of metaphors in it, so you could see a lot of this stuff that's... A lot of his inner, inner, inner demons and everything starting to come out and to taunt him and, and inflict, you know, just a bunch of burden on his on his emotions which is representative of the green fog that infests the screen and also um, symbolic of the last entity when did the service roll in the just out of reach. You gotta keep moving as if you stop once, this will disappear. This the torch will disappear. Things are building up. The green mist is just building up. He's dwelling on everything. Just wandering aimlessly. All these things are coming back and they're forming. They're forming to be the last of the three pestilences. So you're very limited on what you can do in this level. It's very long and drawn out too. And it, it's for rightful reasons. I, I did it all to try to symbolize, you know, the real time symptoms you might have. I had to do between the non-mobile and mobile platforms. So mobile is not able to handle a lot of the backing 3D models that you're seeing back there. I probably could have faked it with just an image, but I went forward with just keeping the 3D objects. And so on mobile, you'll see a lot of these hidden. 
and I did that to try to optimize the performance as much as possible while still captivating the feeling of the, the level. So this has, it's like a, a cycle of completely blinding you to seeing what you could do and then fades back to being able to somewhat see what you can do and then just keeps pulsing between the two. Composition is mainly 3 4 through the entire song, but then I switch it up and I do a 4 4 in the beginning and end. Took a little bit of work to get the mechanics for the dollar bill in the vulture to be able to drop properly and handle like the physics of the ground and everything like that. Took a little bit of time to, to get that to work properly. All right, halfway there. spot metaphor of you know, dwelling on so many different things temptations and all under a platform above you that slowly starts to down to crush. Don't get crushed. You gotta hold down and just keep moving forward. You literally could not let up at all. So you have to keep your, you have to stay strong on that. Holding the button down to keep moving. because I want to get the olive. beginning of the level, he lost a way to really understand what his conscience is trying to tell him. It, it just slowly started to diminish. So his conscience is trying to talk to him, but it's just not registering in his head. So you'll see more of that element where he keeps trying to talk to Stefan. Nothing's registering. 
registering properly. Pretty happy with the barrel system that I got going on here. When it collides, it's got a particle system that spits up the, the dirt and every and mud and everything from the ground. I think it added pretty good vibes to the level as well. Well, the chapter really, because it's that barrel prevents me from going back. You can see where he's trying to get to him, but he just he's not with it. Steak and the holes there. Mm -hmm. the Can't concentrate. I can't go forward anymore either here. I am at the level's end, so I gotta go back. Just back and forth, wandering aimlessly. All elements that I wanted to add into this chapter. Snake just shows up. <laughs> I did that on purpose. No more enemies in this level. I'm over here. So close to the end of the level, he keeps disappearing. Signifying the lack of concentration. Stuck in your own head. part of the level I had two alternate so typically like I like I mentioned in the first level there's two alternate endings to a level there's the olive getting collecting the olive and finishing that way or just the regular level ending so I have a like a, a little bit of a spin-off with this one where it's it's usually a really cheerful level ending but it actually ends up just being uh, it's it's it sounds cheerful in the beginning but he's not jumping around or anything like the previous level so it just ends up like slowing down and ends up coming to a complete halt almost in the song so he's just like completely out of it but the olive one this doesn't change at all I just can't show you that for this particular one uh, just for the just because I want to do the olive branch uh, secret Two levels left. Town well to tower. So I, I want to explain something after this cutscene. Finally comes to Stefan, me. come to your senses. Listen to me. And the fog clears out. You need to get all of this negativity out of your head. Wandering around aimlessly isn't going to help either. How many times do I have to tell you that you can't be bogged down by all of these faults in your life? You're losing love for yourself, and you need to give this love back to yourself and to the world around you. Come on. Let's get some motivation back in you and quickly find some shelter around you. 
So I, what, what I wanted to say before the, the cutscene is that this whole entire town of Gojefa is tied in to each other. It's not just separate levels. If you notice that, if you notice, they're all interconnected. So this particular level, the town well to tower, you can see the Gojefa cistern here, and it's connected to the in the town well level, which is in the second chapter. So all of this is, it's all connected. And geographically, it's all placed in 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 its right rightful place and everything like that. So I wanted to hammer that home to kind of give you that cozy town connected vibe, where you're not completely scattered and you're not just playing in some random woods here and then you're out in some other random location in your next level. I wanted it all to kind of s seem um, like interconnected. This pipe's a little too stuffy for shelter. Is that a dead skunk? Let's find somewhere else to stay. So yeah, so now the concept of this level is we're trying to seek shelter from the storm. Get out of the rain. And everything's decrepit. Things are about to fall in, so... There's a lot of unsafe conditions where you could stay, so we're Stefan's just moving forward to try to find a place where he could just take shelter, because his conscience has finally got through to him. And you could see these spirits of Stefan, of previous memories of him being able to jump, things like that. So this is the jumping memory. So if he runs into it he will be able to jump again. So now we have that back. And then in the composition of this level, you'll notice it just has like a piano now. Every time you gain a, an ability back, I layer an instrument on top of that. So it starts to build up into a bigger song. look like they're all going to collapse at any second. We'd best not stay in any of these. Nope. Can't stay in there. Alright, there's the next. Stefan. Which is the running. Ah! So now I can run and jump again which will prevent me from getting crushed, dwelling in one particular location. Another pipe? Nope. Let's not stay in any of these. The next one is crouching. You can now crouch through here. Anywhere that you're going to have to crouch through isn't good either. This place looks dangerous anyway. We're going to move forward through this. Don't show, don't show, and crush me, don't show. You can, you can hear the music start to build up. The next ability reacquired is the double jump. I like the idea with this chapter where you feel like you've lost everything and you're down at rock bottom and then you start to build yourself up and gain the motivation back. But is it worth spending 
all of your efforts More doing this that like years, going after to collapse years, any years after years after years. It's too bad years. that the vehicle back there is locked. You will find out. Last ability is the wall slide. Up ahead is the base of an old satellite tower. It's not in the best shape, but it has a large enough cover to keep the rain out. Let's check it out. And there's another dollar bill up there, but I'm not going to get that. He sees the end goal. He sees the last piece. And he now is hell-bent to get that back. So he is chasing that depression pestilence. Alright, and so before I try to attack the depression pestilence here, with kindness and peace, what I'm going to do, um, I wanted to give you a backstory here on this tower concept. So, as you can tell in this whole entire game, it's all 2D. You're not really, you're not moving in on the third axis. You're just going back and forth or up and down. And so I wanted to try to mock that third axis a little bit more. So this tower, you can, has a bunch of platforms that goes, looks like it goes around the tower almost and that is what I wanted to do with this so as you can see here as I move forward I will try to get him and he disappears but you can see this platform here is going upwards so but I can't go in so how does that work I animated it so that it can actually adapt So I, I liked I like the ability of being able to do that via script or animation in this. All right. So he must have gone up or going up. Safa, what are you doing? It's much safer to stay down here and wait for the storm to stop. But Stefan is hell bent. He is stopping at nothing to get what he wants. Why are you doing this, Stefan? You're risking your life climbing up this tower. We're almost there. Working our way up just out of reach. Did you hear me, Stefan? Get out of your head and listen to me. You're pushing yourself over the edge of sanity doing this. Too far gone now. You've made up your mind what you want, Stefan. It's hopeless to even try with words anymore. That doesn't sound good. His conscience sounds like he's almost abandoning him. to defeat that depression pestilence and gain himself back to who he once was. The last leap
Boom. All right, we have made it to the final level of the game. Or maybe not. Combat Cataclysm. Also can cause slow motion monsters to fall like this. So everything becomes slow motion temporarily. The concept of this last level was actually one of the first few things that I thought about with this with the story of this game. He's almost got him. And this summons the return of the anxiety and rage pestilence. So close. But his emotions take over and summon them back. So now it's time to suppress them all. Which has the one of my top three compositions in the soundtrack. Pestilence seems to be the biggest pain out of this because I always forget where he's at. Is three locations. done it he has put all his pieces back together he's gotten what he's wanted he's worked years and years and years to get to this point and he has done it he's done it
is going on. I'm sorry, but I had to do this, Stefan. His conscience turned his back on Stefan? What? What happened? Oh, and I'm... I'm controlling the conscience? Why am... I'm not Stefan. Why am I running from... Stefan? Why am... The conscience... Isn't he the bad guy? What's going on? Why is the tower collapsing? game would be the depression pestilence but it actually turned out to be the three pestilences but now it's not over no the boss of the game is Stefan and what he's become and now you are the conscience inflicting peace and kindness into Stefan all hope. This is it. He felt abandoned. His own conscience had betrayed him. He spent so many years focusing only on himself, and it seemed like he would never be who he once was ever again. He had nothing to show for everything he had done for so long. But this was exactly what his conscience warned him about throughout his journey. It's what he wanted Stefan to understand, and the only way of doing so would be to stop him in his tracks. Being able to focus on improving yourself is important in life, but it was the only thing Stefan thought about. He obsessed over it, and by continuously obsessing over it, he missed out on so many other things in life, holding back from giving and receiving love in the world. This was the moment Stefan needed. His conscience's actions showed Stefan everything he had to see to understand the ramifications he would run into if he achieved everything he wanted. His spirit was strong, his intentions were good, but his approach was wrong, and it would lead to personal demise down the road. Life is to be enjoyed, and not made to be constantly trying to fix everything in it. Stefan now realized that through his failed efforts, he had to share his experiences with the people of the world and help them love themselves for who they are. He now knew that it was love in the world, both internally and externally that would ultimately put an end to the struggles of Stefan. And that's the story. And also, you, if you have all the olives, you can go to the replay level section and play the new level. Okay, now that we're in the credits, I guess I can personally give my thanks and credits of, of the sort of the contributors and, and whatnot so uh, of course you know me I, I did the scripting um, designing narration voice acting I did the storyline and I made all the songs I want to thank Kat Badger for her illustrations that she did on the three pestilences um, Kyle Bishop great for technical support and give me his opinions along the way and Matt and Mike Getz for helping me with the getting that awesome production sound after my compositions had and mixing had been done in the on all the individual songs. All right, so if we go to the replay level section, and I guess before I start, yeah, so that is the story of the struggles of Stefan. It's uh, the, 
all about the acceptance of, of you know, being able to accept your self, self-worth and being able to appreciate yourself for who you are, regardless of the situation. So, um, but there's still like a little bit of a side quest here. You got all of the olives, you have your olive branch with all of the olives on it, um, and you have this raccoon, so let's see what's up with that. VHS tape. Please deliver to Stefan. Okay. So I am controlling the raccoon. He moves. He does not shoot kindness, but he crouches and he runs and he can walk. What else can he do? He can see in the dark. Which means that's a good defense for not being able to really defend yourself. You have to completely avoid all enemies in this level. Which are mainly just wolves and this beast. dweller, aka a gigantic bear in the woods. So I'm just going to creep past this. Try not to make... There's no way to avoid it. Run! Where's he at? Ah, oh, there he is! He won't follow me down here. And if you don't, if you haven't noticed yet, it's the sunset scouting level, but I'm moving right this time. Which means I must be trying to go to Stefan's house. See if I can make it through this last part without dying. You gotta just act fast. And think fast. The bear is back and he's chasing me. You have to trust me on that one because I. Uh oh! Close call. And last one, last one. Where is he at? There he is. Make it. Go, go, go. Into the house. Safe. So what's on this tape? Hey there. My name is Clint Becker, and I'm the creator behind The Struggles of Stefan. I really appreciate your persistence in completing the game and allowing me to share the message of the story with you. Again, I appreciate the support so much, and I hope you enjoyed the game. And I really do. Thank you all for watching, letting me share this story with you all. If you liked it, please recommend it to as many people as you want. I'd appreciate as much as you can. And thanks for watching.